All right, guys, have to go out back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. We're officially in Lance Chance Saloon right now. If your team is terrible, it is time to make a move. Seemingly, many teams in the CDL are looking to do exactly that. What will their rosters look like ahead of the Major 4 qualifiers and the World Championships to come? That remains to be seen. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Great time to subscribe because, yes, we're going to have loads of updates on these rosters over the coming days, I'm sure. Firstly, though, we've We've got to talk about Modern Warfare 2. They did the kind of reveal trailer yesterday. Crim6 was not part of it, unfortunately. But, um, I mean, yeah, look, obviously, as expected, they basically showed us absolutely nothing, especially on the multiplayer side. There was, I mean, I just wanted to mention this real quick because the very first thing we saw was this lad hanging upside down out of a plane right here, or out of a helicopter, I guess, firing a pistol while attached to a rope. So all of a sudden, you're thinking, okay, you're like, here we go. It's, it's Rainbow Six time again, to be honest. We've got ropes, we've got hanging upside down, we've got shooting off them. Like, I can't imagine what Selium is going to be absolutely feasting on in this game because I think there was even talk about like kind of a ledge hang. You can hang on a ledge and shoot or something. Also, you can shoot underwater in this game, which hasn't been the case in quite some while in Call of Duty. Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4. But yeah, those games definitely both have that ability. But uh, maybe in this game, you can shoot the pistol underwater. I don't really know. Like, um, but yeah, water is going to be part of some of the multiplayer maps again, like the likes of, you know, Hunted back in the Black Ops 3 days. If you guys remember that one, kind of a good time. A search and destroy map, at least back in the day. Now, um, look, I'll just go through a few things here that they did say about the game because we have some information and some indication as to what it might look like for competitive. But, um, I mean, yeah, not really that much yet until we actually see some multiplayer gameplay. Pretty much the only thing you could take from that uh, reveal trailer, the kind of regular reveal trailer, was um, I saw an AK-47 in there. I saw High Rise in there. We'll see that too in a second. But apparently there's going to be battle maps and there's going to be core maps. So core maps built exclusively for 6 versus 6 gameplay. We believe in this game it's still going to be 4 versus 4 kind of multiplayer action and competitive right in the CDL rather than 5v5 as it was in the original Modern Warfare. So we'll see if, um, if any of their thought processes around that changes it more than likely won't because they probably don't even know how many people are on a competitive team these developers but yeah doors slight cancelling probably going to be back in business once again i mean yeah the doors are certainly there we did say a couple of days ago though that this kind of map editor might well mean that we can go into the actual game itself and change and we'll get rid of some of the doors do whatever that needs to be done for competitive hopefully is the case so if yeah doors are a bit overpowering or overbearing because as we say high rise is coming back it was played in competitive back in the day and um, but yeah maybe doors are going to ruin certain elements of that map who knows maybe we can remove Move. We'll see how that one goes. Now, um, look, still, we heard a while ago that the attachments in this game were going to be dialed down to previous Call of Duty games that were going to go back to a more simple approach. Now, I believe it is more simple in terms of actually setting up your class, but it's not as simple at all in terms of the amount of attachments there is. There's still going to be like 70 attachments in the game, if not more, like per weapon or whatever, which is um, it's just absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. Now, the real craziness about this that a lot of people have been discussing, right, is the fact that it's not just you put your attachments, like, okay, let's say you go into your barrels, you have like six. 16, I don't know, probably not 16, but let's say you have 10 different barrels or something you can put on your gun. Now, um, you don't just put the barrel on the gun and that's it. You can put the barrel on the gun, but then you can adjust as like a volume bar, I think Jeff described it as, basically like a percentage in terms of, okay, how long is this barrel compared to how short is the barrel? Therefore, that's going to affect the range a bit. So not only can I choose this barrel out of these 10 barrels, but I can then have it, okay, 60% of what it could be in terms of, you know, honestly, it's going to be crazy, the amount of implications for the classes. But as Exclusive Ace says, actually setting up the class is somewhat more simple than previously. He says that based on what he saw previously, there's um three attachments and then four weapon parts. So if you can see here, for example, we've got um I mean effectively the muzzle, underbarrel, laser, ammunition, optic, or rear grip. You can um choose three out of those six to have on your weapon, and then you get to choose a barrel, magazine, receiver, and stock. So in terms of attachments, there's only kind of three attachments, but then there's four weapon parts, which also makes some sort of implication. So like I mean they keep complicating this stuff. I wish we could just go back in the day to some classic Call of Duty, I suppose. But um. Maybe it's going to be somewhat better than the previous couple of years. Who knows? Now, um, this is kind of as the flank say is on that topic, really. thought this is rather good. Like, apparently, the, the attachment shooting is incredibly precise. You can yeah, fine-tune attachments up to incredible levels of detail. Not sure why we'd want to or need to, or whether this is just going to be for Warzone, or um, it's going to transfer over into multiplayer as well. And yeah, the GA committee might have to be out in full force to deal with this year. Now, water is going to return. We've seen it a few years ago as well. So yes, you can swim in the water. The fish AI, it might be back in business 
business once again, which is exciting scenes. Maybe one week too late for Dashi and Optic fans. Of course, it's not the first time it's been in Call of Duty, though. Black Ops 4 certainly had it, and Black Ops 3 had it as well. That was used in competitive from time to time on Hunted, the map I mentioned, for example. But, um, I mean, yeah, not really too concerned about this one, to be honest. But it could make for some interesting map situations, as we did see back in the day. This, another interesting thing that Preston Bias points out, that uh, the Ricochet anti-cheat that was added rather late into this title, at least the multiplayer side, is going to be integrated into the game from launch, which um, can only be a good thing, of course, expected, but still good news nonetheless. Now, I wanted to say this, because this I didn't really notice in the trailer initially, but people were talking about it, that um, it seems like this is high-rise. I mean, it's pretty much got to be high-rise. You can see the helipad right here, the kind of underground section over here, and, um, well, the buildings that you used to be able to get on top of. Now, this map was played in, I think, Capture the Flag, and it was played in Search and Destroy back in the Modern Warfare 2 days, and I'm pretty sure they even brought it back for Search, because it was called Skyrise back in Advanced Warfare. They brought it back as a DLC map, and um, it was actually playable at that game. So, it depends. If we've got CTF in this game, I think it would be viable. Search and Destroy, it might be viable on as well. I don't know what, you know, if they're going to keep the same glitches they had back in the day, but they really back in with the nostalgia. We know how it is at this point, but, um, you know, it still can't be a bad thing, I suppose, for competitive at the end of the day. And as Tug says, I'd do anything for Modern Warfare 2 to remove Tactical Sprint from the game. We'll see about that one, because um, I'm pretty sure they said they're trying to align everything across Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, all the games are going to have the same engine. Doesn't mean they necessarily have to have the same movement mechanics, but, um, yeah, he wants Tactical Sprint gone. Not sure I'd be too confident on that one. We shall see. But as Nero Poison says, like, look, we'll have to wait for the multiplayer trailer now, because we basically didn't get to see anything from that one. So that's all the Modern Warfare 2 stuff I think we can talk about today. When we see multiplayer, more action, I'm sure we'll have more details and leaks about it over the coming days and weeks as well. But um, I mean, yeah, you've got to think that we're playing this game potentially for two years here in the CDL, so it better be a good one, to be honest. Now let's dive into this Roster Mania stuff then, right? So this was the first thing we saw of the day on the challenges front, Gizmo leaving Toronto Ultra Academy Europe. So I was kind of confused, first of all, the fact that Gizmo was in Toronto for the challenges event with his team to play the challenges side, and then like London was also there at the same event, I'm guessing. Thing, but um, they, of course, didn't have Gizmo on the team. He was uh, probably the best player for a brief period of time on the London team at the start of the season. It was kind of a critical feature of their early success. He um, you know, had some personal difficulties, went back home. Ever since that really has happened, it's definitely thrown off the momentum of the team. How he has come through, they've made some changes with Zero going to SMGs, ARs, flexes, all this type of stuff. Hasn't really worked out too well for them. They've looked okay at times when Afro shows up, because I think he has superstar potential, most certainly. But the best version of their roster was certainly when they had Gizmo in or arguably even when they had Paul X in for a couple of series before they kind of, well, brought Gizmo back and Paul X went over to the New York sides. But, um, I mean, yeah, Gizmo has left that academy. It seems like he's coming back to the US. Whatever he was dealing with in the UK is that, well, sorted out now. Hopefully everything's fine on that front and he's going to be back in the London team. Now, of course, the question is, can he actually make this team as good as it was before? Because we've seen many times in COD history, the likes of the Asim situation last year on Subliners or even the Dashi situation at the start of Black Ops 4, the visa issues that they had that um, effectively caused problems that effectively led to a little bit of friction and the chemistry also not quite where it necessarily should have been and they couldn't quite get back to their previous level. I think that's going to be the case with London. I kind of doubt they're going to be able to get back to the top three team in the game that they were at the start of the season. But I think it probably will give them a bit more hope with the roles as they want them to be to make something happen going forward. So I also think Harry's a great player and he's really showed it so far, but um, you know, hasn't obviously found a perfect situation in this London team. It makes sense that Gizmo will be making the return. It was the rotation say though, we understand that London won't be the only CDL roster to make changes during the bake before the major four qualifiers, as you might well expect, because I don't know if there's going to be a roster lock, because I'm pretty sure last year, before the stage five qualifiers, I mean, it was basically stage five last year, they didn't really call it qualifiers, but I'm pretty sure there was a roster lock then last year. So basically, whoever you had on your roster and your sub bench, those were the only players you could use for stage five and the world championship. Now, um, I mean, this season, maybe it's a similar deal where the players or the teams have to lock down their rosters and maybe have to bring in a substitute or something and maybe an extra one just in case they need it, because if they don't, they might not be able to make any changes going forward. They might not be a roster lock, but imagine there might be, to be honest, ahead of the World Championship at the very least. This then is the key rumour of that day, really, that Florida Mutineers are expected to trial up players during this break. Dave Paddy being the odd man out. We've kind of expected this for quite some time. I mean, look, how many times do we say it when this team was initially formed? You've got three ARs on the team. We know Dave Paddy, like, he doesn't drop the greatest numbers in terms of kills and deaths and damage and this type of stuff and impact in the game. And um, it really does tend to be Skies and Awakening that are taken over whenever they're winning series. And most people have said, look, Vivid, a lot of the time, is just left out to dry. He's their no real SMG duo. Yes, their play style and their team formation seems to work remarkably well sometimes against teams like Optic. Dave Paddy seems to be the Optic hard counter, if anything, but in most situations when they do lose series, it seems to be the kind of SMG duo that falls short, because Wade can definitely do it, Big Wade can definitely do it on the SMG, but um, just the way the AR combination works on this team doesn't make that much sense, right? So they're deciding, look, if we need to upgrade our roster, if we want to go to the next level, because I think they have 
the talent on their team to be more competitive than they are. And Dave Paddy seems like a pretty solid player, good communicator. And that's kind of the key issue with them. their team last year was that the comms weren't good at all. Neptune made that point very clear after leaving their team. And maybe they want to bring him back. Who knows? Now, um, I mean, Yeez apparently will likely at least get an opportunity, right? Because he's on their sub bench. They're surely going to give him a go. I want to see surprised they didn't do this earlier. I almost predicted before the season began that Yeez was going to be the first player to actually get trial out in, in a starting team. But they've waited quite some time to do it. So I'm sure they're going to trial out Yeez on their sub bench. There are some other options out there, though. Like, I thought this kind of funny from Florida. Talent of Skib starting drive up for impressions. But yeah, probably confirming to us at least some degree this probably is going to be the case. Now, Pristini wants to go. I'm not really sure what Pristini has been doing the last couple of months because we saw he subbed in for FaZe briefly when Simp was unwell. And um, of course, he is the FaZe substitute. But he said after that time, he went to the flank and said, look, I'm looking to come back, took a few months off after last season. I'm looking to compete and get back into the Pro League effectively. Not really sure what he's been doing in the challenger side recently because he hasn't had a particular results of notes to my understanding. But um, I mean, still, he might be a player to consider. Like, Brasini and Vivid on the SMGs, that'd be a remarkably aggressive SMG duo. Might work out rather well for them, to be honest. But I think you need a slaying SMG. I'm not necessarily sure Brasini can be that guy. Now, these are some of the options. I know some people have been talking about Wardy from the European side. If he didn't have visa issues and everything with Sunshine and Rainbows on that front, I feel like Wardy would definitely be a player that would be considered because he's been killing it lately, at least so far this season. Now, I voted Neptune here, even though I didn't really think about this too much because, in fairness, Neptune did not depart with last year's team on particularly great terms. You guys remember the drama with Wakening with Big Wake after the season where he effectively said, like, look, the um, the comms weren't great there and it was a bit of a disaster for the team. So I'm not really sure they want to bring him back. The other talk has been Pro Loot comes through, Skies becomes the main. I wouldn't be surprised if Skies does become the main, but Pro Loot getting bought out seems unlikely to me because the Illy situation is so uncertain really from the optic sides. I'm sure they don't want to get rid of Pro Loot. I imagine he's going to sell on their sub bench for the rest of the season. So not sure they have that many options, but Neptune is one that you would at least consider because Neptune, a very decent player. He was obviously good for their team last year, has some history with the organization, good and bad. But at the same time, in terms of challenges, SMG players that have slain potential, there's um, there's not that many out there right now that you can actually go and grab. A lot of them have already been picked up or have problems, such as some of the European guys. So maybe that's a possibility. I'm sure they'll try some people out. The probably most likely option here is that Yeez comes in probably in that SMG role. But uh, yeah, we shall see as time progresses. And if Dave Paddy can get a chance again in the CDL somewhere or another. This also from CDL Scrimmins I thought was rather interesting. This, um, yeah, I'm not sure if the sources on this are accurate. Of course, Crone hasn't tweeted it, but I'd imagine there's probably something behind this, right? Because, I mean, who wouldn't expect LAG to be looking at making a change right now? They are very much on the cusp of not making the World Championship. If their form continues, they most certainly won't make it. So, like, um, yeah, apparently they're looking to make a move as well. So, London making a change, Florida, Los Angeles, Grillers. Questions also from my perspective about Boston, right? What's going to happen there? Are they looking to do something? Because their team's also, like Los Angeles, Grillers, been in a bit of a shambles as of late. Maybe they try and get rid of Capsdell or someone like that. Because I think Capsdell was great at the start of the year, but since then, hasn't really performed to that level or looks particularly comfortable or impactful, let's just say on the map, there might be some other targets they could get around. And whether subliners stick together either is a bit of a question. I kind of doubt the Hydra is going to bench himself or anything until next year, because, uh, well, look, they still have a chance to actually make it to the World Championship. It would be a crazy storyline if they accomplished it. But um, yeah, definitely intriguing perspective here. What do you expect Florida to do? Are Los Angeles Grillers going to pull the trigger as well? Boston Breach, I'd be surprised if they stick with their current roster, and London seems rather expected as to what they're planning to do at the present time. But very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. This just from the subliners real quick. Zero in five, of course, so far this year at Majors. All of their 70 CDL points have come from online qualifiers. They're effectively going to need to win the final one if they want a chance here, but you know, it's not out of the realms of possibility just yet. I thought this is kind of funny, really, here from, well, the middle search if I could tweak this one out. And the top ladders are like, you know, roster moves that make sense. There's very few of those, but you know, you could argue that it's the same thing very much for the sub ladders as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, tell us a YouTube gods, that's a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And I'm growing the competitive quality community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time.